Hi, I'm Betty Lynn, and I'm excited to introduce my teammates, Sarah Hubschman, Jen Lynn, and Rachel Berkowitz. Our capstone is Witch's Brew, a real-time multiplayer collaborative party game inspired by Space Team. We built it for the web with a mobile optimized design so you can play it on both desktop and mobile devices. We chose this project because of the challenge of building a multiplayer game, and it's the kind of fun co-op game we'd actually play with our friends. And now Sarah's going to walk through how to play. Three players are joining the Coven, the Hollowed of Brooklyn. The Covens are like game rooms that groups of players can play in. When each player presses ready, the game will start. The commands on the screen let you know which ingredients to add to the cauldron before the timer runs out. However, the commands on the screen will not always match the ingredients on your screen, so you'll need to communicate with your coven mates. You complete 70% of the commands or more, your game will level up. As the levels increase, it becomes more difficult by adding more ingredients or decreasing the time. Implementing dragging and dropping was challenging because the on-drag event is not mobile compatible. We needed a way to track our touch events to send our actions to our Firebase server. To do this, we used a library called Dragabilly, which uses pointer events to create draggable objects. And it will track mouse events and touch events so you can play on desktop and mobile. We were able to make all of our ingredients into draggable objects. Now, Rachel will walk us through some of the technologies we use to make Witch's Brew. Witch's Brew is Firebase on the back end, handling serving, hosting, and the database, with the entire front end built in React, with state management and Redux with React Redux. We chose to use Firebase for the back end because of its real-time database and WebSockets integration. Because Witch's Brew is a collaborative game where up to four machines need to be constantly syncing data, a real-time, reliable data storage solution was our absolute first priority in choosing a stack. We opted to store game state in Firebase's NoSQL database by storing individual actions as rows in the database. When a player takes an action, that action is added as a database record, and it is seeded almost instantaneously to all of the other players. When that happens, the action will also trigger a change to our Redux store in the front end, which will then trigger changes to the React components. Those are the things that players are seeing when they're actually playing the game. React and Redux were great choices for our front end because of their speed and scalability. But even with the right stack, there were still challenges in keeping all of our player states in sync. Here to talk more about that is Jin. One of the challenges we had is synchronization between players. Using Firebase to store our actions, we found synchronicity issues when uh, if it was the first time a player connected to the store, they would first dispatch a new action before all of the previous action from Firebase was taken into account. This causes the game state to diverge between players. We solved this problem by altering our Firebase middleware. So while a player is catching up with the store by dispatching all previous action from Firebase, we don't dispatch her own actions. We put them in the queue. When her store is up to date, then we push her actions to the Firebase, and all players now can dispatch them. In this way, our game state will be consistent. And Betty is going to talk about another bit challenge we had. So our timer was an interesting challenge because of how deeply tied it is to our gameplay. On top of needing to render a countdown, the timer needs to start when the player gets an ingredient, stop when the command is fulfilled or if time runs out, and restart if there are more commands. Based on when a player triggers an action, we needed to synchronize the timer's ticking to an action dispatching. To accomplish this, we stored the time in the local state and set a Boolean based on whether or not the timer should be running. And despite these challenges, we are all very proud of our game. Early on, we decided that we wanted to make something delightful, whimsical, original, and ambitious, and we're excited to be able to share Witch's Brew with you today. Check us out at playwitchesbrew.com.